guys, what's up everyone? How are you people doing? Hoping that all of you guys are doing good and taking very good care of yourself. Personal hygiene is very important people. So with that said guys, let me introduce myself and the topic for the day. The topic for the day is this electricity session number two uh, where we are going to talk about Ohm's Law and my name is Anup Manoharan. I'm a master teacher of science here with Antu. So very warm welcome to all of you guys out there. Hoping that again, you guys are staying safe and uh, being at home, doing everything that is possible to take care of yourself. Anyways, so this is lecture number two. Lecture number two guys, that is Ohm's Law. In the last session, if you guys remember, we talked about current and potential difference. Today, we'll be talking about Ohm's Law. So before we get started, I'll start off with a very simple quote and the quote for today is is this study like there's no tomorrow because if you keep putting off your studies for tomorrow you'll probably be too late you guys already uh, know that tomorrow never arrives because by the time tomorrow comes it's again today so tomorrow never comes literally it never comes so please make sure to give uh, your best uh, Whatever, you know, what are we supposed to do today? Make sure that you do, do, the, do that today itself because there's no point in postponing stuff because ultimately you have to do it. So why postpone it and uh, get into trouble? So make sure that you do it as soon as you possibly can. All right, with that said, guys, let us get started with today's session where in the last session, if you guys remember, we talked about current and potential difference. So please make sure to go to the recordings of that. Uh, go watch the video again to uh, to recon to, you know, to rebrush the concept what all you have seen in the past. So in the end of the last session and giving you a small little homework a tiny piece of homework and that homework was this how much charge can a potential difference of 10 volt move if it takes 5 joules to move charge from one point to the other so the answer to that question is actually 0.5 coulomb kudos to all those guys who gave the right answer hats off people so let me just do it for you guys so here is this first thing uh, remember the formula that i gave you that is potential difference is equal to work done by a work done basically worked on on a particular charge to bring from infinity to a certain point so the formula goes like this so i'm just going to substitute the values directly over here so i know that uh, work done is basically five joules and i know that the char uh, the uh, voltage uh, is 10 volt so i'm just going to rearrange the equation first before i solve this so i'll rearrange the equation to give me uh, uh, to give me the charge so 5 divided by 10 is equal to q that gives me 0 0.5 coulomb so that is the answer case very simple substitution just a simple arithmetic and then you're done that's always it's a very simple question with that said let us get started with today's session that is nothing but understanding about ohm's law so if you had attended the last session i gave you a simple reference to uh, understand about potential difference i told you that the water would flow from container number one to container number two because the pressure inside container number one because there's so much of water particles the pressure over there is more compared to container number two so the water would flow from high pressure to low pressure i also gave you that wind also always moves from high pressure to low pressure in the same way i also told you that electric current also flows from higher potential to lower potential so here's the thing guys now if you talk about the speed or how fast the the water flow happens so here's the question when the water flow is high it means what it actually means that there is a lot of pressure pressure difference so basically there is a higher pressure difference and that is why the water flow is much more faster so it's a very simple thing to understand like in your everyday example if you talk about a dam a dam has a lot of water right so when they open up the gate of the dam the water flows with a very high speed even if you talk about a waterfall also see that uh, it comes from such you know great height that the water uh, the water comes at a very greater speed but if you take a bucket of water and keep it at a certain height and put it on your head, you will not have the same, uh, what is it, speed. The water does not flow at the same speed. So what I'm trying to say is that if the pressure difference is more, then the water flow would also be greater. All right. In the same way, guys, when the potential difference is also more, the flow of current would also be greater. Let me explain that. So here it is. Let's say that I have two batteries. I have one battery which is of 6 volt and the other is of 12 volt. Now, in which of these do you think that the current flow would be greater? Now, just by talking about numbers, 12 should be the answer. And yes, it is, but not by talking about the numbers. But yes, guys, if you think about it, I told you that if the potential, only if, the, if, the, only if you create a potential difference, current starts flowing. So in a six volt battery, the potential difference is comparatively lesser. So the current flow is much more slower or the flow of current is actually a little less. But on the other hand, when, when I connect the same wire or that same circuit to a 12 volt, 12 volt battery, the flow of current would be greater because there's a greater potential difference. So very simple guys, if the potential difference is more, the current flow would be more. 
as simple as that so there is a quantity which shows this relationship between the flow of current and the potential uh, potential difference created and that quantity my friends is what is called as the ohms law so here also why does it move because of the fact that there's a greater potential difference created so the flow of current would also be greater so that quantity that shows the relationship between potential difference and the flow of current is what is called as ohms law now so what is first of all try to recollect what is current the flow of charge per unit time so that is what is current so how much amount of uh, charge is passing would also be determined by the potential difference created between those uh, between the bar or the, uh, the potential difference created in the circuit so that means whichever battery is it a 12 volt battery is it a 5 volt battery that also definitely matters so mathematically speaking v is proportional to i that means if voltage increases current would also increase the flow of current would also increase if the voltage decreases then the flow of current would also decrease it's directly proportional so mathematically speaking this is how you denote it now to remove this proportionality sign because this is proportionality that means if one increases the other increases so to remove that proportionality sign i'll introduce the constant a proportionality constant called as resistance so what is this resistance i'll tell you that in a minute for now guys just remember this that v is basically equal to i into r how did i get r to remove that proportionality sign because v is proportional to i so to remove this proportionality sign i'll introduce this constant which is nothing but r which is nothing but resistance all right so if you rearrange the equation to give r r is equal to v by i again simple arithmetics now what is the resistance let's talk about that resistance is nothing but guys the opposition offered to the current flow for example guys, it's a very simple example that i keep uh, referring to imagine that there is a narrow road all right and there are like 10 people in between all right and you're supposed to go from one end to the other you can easily walk there's only 10 people even though it's a narrow road you might like you know like hit one or two people and then you might end up from a to b let's say there are 100 people in between all right there are 100 uh, people in between in that same narrow road there are 100 people and you're supposed to go from one end to the other now in this case obviously it'll take you a longer time for you to go from a to b why because the resistance or the obstruction offered is more so you have a lot more people to go across you have to push people away and then finally reach that so basically that is what is resistance so for a for a you know for when you talk about an electron if it has to go from one end to another it obviously will meet a lot of other electrons also other electrons and all which are present in the in the circuit so what happens that it has to go or uh, basically it has to travel from one end to the other it has to go from the negative terminal to the positive terminal so when it is going whatever obstruction is offered to it that is what is called as resistance and it is it is uh, uh, denoted by uh, the letter omega that is this this is omega and the si unit of uh, resistance is nothing but ohm so that's how you uh, you know what to say the the si unit is ohm which is denoted by omega which is uh, nothing but this the symbol that you see over here now uh, apart from this guys if you have to really show what it looks like this is what it looks like so imagine that this is a simple electric wire and the current or the electrons are flowing from one end to another or the current there's a flow of current happening so what happens that when you uh, add a resistor to it or that resistance that is there would basically slow down the flow of electron that means the current passing through the circuit would also decrease to some extent so basically you see this when i narrow down the path what is happening they're all getting congested and you see that the flow of electrons are slowing down so that is what a resistance or resistor does so the electrical equipment that is introduced in a circuit to improve or to increase the resistance is called as a resistor generally all electrical equipment has have their own resistor uh, no resistance because nothing is uh, perfect there will always be some sort of mixture in the uh, material or the length of the why all of these are different factors that affects resistance now here we go guys now what we can understand is what are the limitations of ohm's law because there are few limitations to ohm's law unlike your gravity ohm's law is not a universal law the reason why it's not a universal law is because ohm's law depends on the temperature as well as the pressure of that particular uh, you know the temperature of the room the temperature of the material everything it depends on now this is the reason why it is not a universal law it's a fundamental law it's not a universal law however like unlike gravity where you know you experience 
against gravity wherever you go it does not depend on the pressure it does not depend on the temperature gravity does not depend on temperature or pressure right but when you talk about ohm's law it depends on the temperature and pressure and because of that it is not a universal law and also it depends on the material as well like certain material like for example copper offers very less resistance compared to other materials where uh, the resistance is more so you have to think about all of these different factors now uh, the thing about temperature is this people when you increase the temperature what is temperature or basically when you give heat energy to it what happens the rapidness increases basically the particles or the electrons start moving more rapidly they get more energy so they start moving more vigorously so when they start moving more vigorously the flow of current also increases because they start moving very rapidly from one end to another so when the temperature increases the flow of current also increases so this is the reason because I told you that uh, volt basically I told you that potential difference is directly proportional to the current flowing so if the temperature increases the flow of current also increases that means that when a, when the temperature increases the flow of current not only depends on the potential difference but it also depends on the temperature as well and because of this I have to always maintain the temperature of the room that I'm doing the experiment in I have to make sure that the pressure is equal uh, everything should be constant because if the temperature increases then yes the value that you get would also differ all right so these are some of the limitations of ohm's law guys so by that we have completed one of the most simplest topics of uh, uh electricity now what we're going to do is we're going to solve some questions based on it there are a couple of questions very interesting questions that we'll be doing now again guys i want all of you guys to try out each and every question it is not just for me to show it to you people it's for you to try it out so pause the video right there take a second write down the question and write down the answer as well and if you can put it down in the comment section as well so that i can check and let you know where you've gone wrong all right so so here's the question guys for a given device which of the following statement is true is v minus i is constant v plus i is constant v divided by i is constant or v into r i is constant which of these statement or which of this is true for a given uh, device all right so once again guys pause the video and write uh, tell the answer the answer to this question however is actually option number c why because we all we have already seen that r is a proportionality constant that is introduced so v is equal to i into r so r is equal to v divided by i so it's a very simple uh, uh, you know arithmetic again uh, uh, arrangement so you'll get it as r, r r is the one which is actually constant in a given device as long as again the temperature and pressure everything is kept constant right next question find the current through a resistor r of resist okay find the current flowing through a resistor r of resistance 2 ohms if the voltage across the resistor is 6 volt so they've given you the current they've given you the uh, resistance they've also given you the potential difference you're supposed to find out the current again very simple question guys here these are the options option a is 1 volt option b is 2 volt sorry 2 amperes 1 ampere 2 ampere 3 ampere and 4 amperes sorry people anyways so here is the question try to do it by yourself again write down the answer in the comment section below at least tell me a b c or d so that i can check your answers anyways so i'll write down the given data first so r is given two ohms they've also given you uh the potential difference that is six volt i'm supposed to find out the current again what is the formula v is equal to i into r i know i have to rearrange the equation to get i so i'll just rearrange the equation it'll be v by r is equal to i put on the values so it'll be uh voltage is uh, 6 volt and the resistance is 2 so it'll give me 6 watt ampere so that sorry not 6 3 amperes my god all right sorry people a lot of a uh, lot of mistakes all right yes so it'll be 3 amperes 3 amperes would be the right answer so if you look uh, check the answer it'll be option number c which will be the right answer well done people all those who gave the right answer hats off next question let the resistance of an electrical component remain constant while the potential difference across the two ends of the component increase decrease to half of its former value what change will occur in the current through it so in simple words guys they are telling you that there is there's a simple circuit and there's some potential difference created the current is flowing so what they're doing is that they are decreasing the potential difference by half they're asking you what would happen to the current flowing through that circuit will it be doubled will it be halved will it will have no change at all all it will it become one fourth of it all right one fourth of the original value that is the question guys again pause the video try to find out the answer how are the answer to this question is actually pretty simple all right so i'm just i'm just gonna write it so v is equal to i into r all right so i is equal to what i is equal to v by r all right now 
Here, what they're saying is that while the potential difference equals to n uh, is decreased, so they're decreasing to half. All right. So what I'll write it as so the new potential difference I'll take it as v dash is equal to v by two. That is the original potential difference by two. They're halving it. No. So this is what I get. So I'll basically uh, get the, I'll just write the new formula. So V dash is equal to, because if the voltage is changing, obviously the current is also changing. So the resistance is kept constant. So I'll just keep it as it is. So what will be the new value? So I dash is equal to V dash by R. Simple. Now, what is V dash? Very simple case. So V is equal to I into R. That was the initial potential difference, initial current passing through it. Then they are halving it. So V dash is equal to V by two. So V dash is equal to I dash into R. Because again, if the potential difference is changing, obviously the current would also change. So what I'm going to do is that this is the equation that I'm going to take right now. All right. So uh, one second, people. Let me just make that uh, correction. Yes. So I dash is equal to V dash by R. Now, what is V dash? V dash is V by 2, substitute the value. So I dash is equal to V dash, sorry, V. Okay. <laughs> sorry, people, sorry, a lot of mistakes. All right. So V by 2 divided, whole divided by R. So I can write it as V by 2 R. Now I can write this as 1 by 2 into V by R. Very simple. Again, I can write this as 1 by 2 into V by R. Now, what is V by R? What is V by R? It is I. So I'll just substitute the value over here. So half into I. So basically, the new current would also be 1 by 2 or basically half of the initial current. So what is the final for final answer that you're going to get? So I'll just write it over here. And it's a little clumsy, but yes. I dash is equal to, that is a new current uh, passing through the circuit would be equal to 1 by half or half of the original current. So when the potential difference is halved, the current passing through the circuit would also be halved. So the answer to that question would be option number B, which is nothing but halved. Simple people, as simple as that. I know the question seems a little hard, but it's actually a pretty decent, very simple, very interesting question. Next question, this is another interesting one. Find the work done in moving a charge of 10 coulomb through a resistance of two ohms in 10 seconds. You're supposed to find out what is the work done, all right? So the uh, options are these. 10 joules, 20 joules, 30 joules, or 40 joules. Now again, all those who attended the previous session, this would be a much more easier question for you people. So I'll just write on the given data first, all right? So charge is given, Q is equal to 10 coulombs. They've given, they've given me the resistance as two ohms. They've given me the time taken also as 10 seconds. Now, first thing first, find out the current. How will you find out the current? Current is equal to the flow, the rate of flow of charge. So I'll just substitute the values. Q is 10. 10, uh, the time taken is also 10 seconds so that'll give me one ampere so the current flowing through the circuit is one ampere so i found out the current i also i know the resistance so using the ohms law v is equal to ir i can find out what is the voltage or what is the potential difference so potential difference is equal to one ampere into the resistance is two so i'll get it as two volt all right so i found the volt of the potential difference is two volt i found out the current to be one ampere now to find out work done. Now remember the formula work done now. That is V is equal to, that is potential difference is equal to work done to bring a unit charge to a certain point. So this is what I'm going to get. So I'll just, this is the formula. So I'm just going to substitute the values. First of all, rearrange the equation to give double, uh, to give work done. So work done is equal to uh, potential difference into charge. All right. So potential difference is 2. The charge is 10. So you'll get it as 20 joules simple as simple as that i know there's a lot of uh, you know it's like you're eating it the other way but still it is a very interesting question that uh, yields you a very satisfying answer also so first thing what i did repeating the answer first thing i found out the current uh, i found out the current by uh, using the formula q by t that is charge uh, per unit time so i divided that i got as one ampere then i used ohm's law that is v is equal to i into r this was the second formula that i used to give me uh, the potential difference once i found out the potential difference i put it in the equation because i know the definition of potential difference is work done to move a unit charge from infinity to a certain point so this is the formula so voltage or potential difference is equal to work done by uh, charge so basically uh, work done unit charge so divided by q that if you rearrange you'll get the work done work done is equal to voltage or uh, potential difference into uh, charge so you'll get us 20 joules so the right answer would be option number b guys that is 20 joules simple
plain and simple right the next question is rather simple again guys i want all of you guys to try out each and every question and let me know where you're finding it difficult all right here's the next one what is the potential difference between the ends of the conductor of 16 ohm resistance when the current is 1.5 amperes uh, flowing through it. So the current is given, they've given you the resistance also. You're supposed to find out the potential difference. The options are 20 volt, 24 volt, 10.6 volt or 15 volt. Once again guys, direct substitute. I don't think this, it's going to get any easier than this. So potential difference is equal to current into the resistance. So current is given as how much? 1.5 amperes, resistance is 16. So I think it will get as 24 volt so 1.5 into 16 you get us 24 volts so the right answer would be option number b very simple <sighs> all right anyways here's the next one guys the last question why ohm's law is not a universal law is it because it depends on the physical factors of the conductor like temperature and pressure is it all uh, option number b is that all appliances don't follow ohm's law or both a and b or none of these what do you think is the right answer for this question now think it guys think it through and then answer why is ohm's law not a universal law but uh, I've only told you one of the factors, but there are actually two factors uh, regarding this. So anyways, you let me know what is the answer in the comment section below. I'll tell you what the answer for this question is. The answer to this question is actually option number C, guys. Why is that so? Is because Ohm's law is not applicable for, you know, if you talk about semiconductors, it is not applicable. And also in insulators, it is not applicable. And because of this, you can say that it is not a universal law. Because when you say universal law, it has to be applicable to everything, right? But if you talk about Ohm's law, it is not applicable for semiconductors like silicon and all that. And it is also not uh, applicable on insulators. So because of this reason and also because it depends on external factors like temperature and pressure, you can say that your Ohm's law is not a universal law. Dun, 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 dun. That's all guys. So that is it for today. But yes, as always, you have a homework. And I want all of you guys to do all the homework. And whoever answers the question the fastest in the comment section below, I'll put up their name, name in the next session. So watch out for that as well. Here's the question for today. Calculate the potential difference between the two points of a terminal if an electric current of 10 ampere is flowing through it having resistance of 20 ohms. So you're supposed to find out what is the potential difference. They've given you the current, they've given you the uh, resistance also. Plain on uh, plain old simple substitution, you'll get the answer. Try out this question and whoever answers it the fastest will be having their name put up in the next session so watch out for that guys with that said people that's it from my side thank you for joining i hope you guys enjoyed today's session if you guys did enjoy today's session give a like and also subscribe to the channel because we'll be taking we'll be coming up with all uh, all these uh, topics uh, as the days go by and uh, share it with your friends let the spread the word let the world know that uh, we have a Vida, new channel for vidantu thank you for joining people and if you have any doubts you can let it uh, let me know in the comment section below or if you want to reach out to me personally you can also send me an email on this email id anup.manoran at the vidantu.com that's my personal email ID, you can let me know whatever doubts you have over there. So until the next time we meet, take care of yourself and may the force be with you. Take care guys. Take care. See you all. Take care.